the kind of judge no one can forget. Hello, my friends, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be highlighting compassion in the criminal justice system. We're in a time right now that we have so much anxiety. There's so much unknown in the world around us. There's so much fear and negativity. I figured it would be so fun to pass along stories of compassion and positivity within the criminal justice system. So if you're interested in hearing a story about a judge who gave the most creative punishments versus jail time, Time, please keep watching. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. I will pop a link to it up there. It's also linked down below all the time in the description box. I use my many years of experience to help prison wives and family members. We do not glorify or glamorize prison or prison life here, but I give you tools and exercises to make the best out of this, frankly, very painful and hopefully one-shot deal. If you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button. It just helps me so much in YouTube. Also, if you're not already subscribed, hit that red button and ring the little bell next to it so you're notified every single time I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes we go live here and there. Okay, so this is such a fun story that I stumbled on. I wanted to do a compassion and criminal justice kind of series to keep us positive and laughing and happy as much as we possibly can right now so we don't get stuck in the depression. Here's a silver lining for you guys. This judge is out of Painesville, Ohio, and his name is Judge Chickenetti, but most people call him Judge Chick. He sees about 30 to 40 defendants a day, and he's become known, he's actually gone viral as the judge who offers the most creative sentencing. And now to this story, an Ohio judge defending an unusual punishment. Gave one teen a punishment she definitely will never forget. 18-year-old Victoria Bascom takes a cab ride that stiffs the driver in the end. The teenager who skipped out on a cab fare to a long walk of shame. So let's go through a few of these and then I will tell you his explanation on why he does this instead of just going by the law books and saying you deserve 60 days in jail, you deserve 90 days in jail, you deserve 24 months in jail, etc. And how this has affected his numbers and the repeat offenders that come to his courtroom. So I love this story. There's an owl. Can you guys hear the owl outside? I thought owls slept during the day. I swear I hear an owl. All right, ignore me. So the first defendant that they highlighted was a young girl who I think she was probably just 18 years old and she ditched out on cab fare. And this is the case that made him go viral, that made him famous. So when she appeared in his courtroom, he said, okay, well, if you didn't take your cab, how would you have gotten where you wanted to go? And she said, well, I probably would have walked. It was a $30 cab fare that she skipped out on. So when she said that she would have walked, it triggered something in the judge and he said, okay, as your punishment, you could choose 30 days in jail or you could walk 30 miles. They interviewed her afterwards. I'll place it right in here if I could find the video. I've never been to jail and I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> I'm kind of upset about the sentence, you know, because I'm thinking I was going to go in and have to just pay a fine. Like it's only $100. I end up almost getting jail time. So I guess I'm kind of lucky he gave me this option. She said that she just thought she was going to go home and pay a fine and be done with it. But she wound up having to walk 30 miles, which is of course better than a month in jail. But at the same time, it's also more effective than just writing off a couple hundred dollars and then forgetting about it and probably doing it all over again. Although it would be the most expensive cab ride, this was probably the most memorable cab ride and she will always, from here on out, pay her cab fare, I am sure. The next defendant in his courtroom was there for soliciting a prostitute. He was given the choice of jail time or public humiliation and he chose public humiliation so he had to go to a very heavily populated area in town and walk around wearing a chicken suit. Is this tough enough punishment that you're never ever going to be doing something like this again? I, yes, absolutely. There was another young boy that was in his courtroom for stealing out of a pawn porn shop, I think, or a pawn shop. This teen stole porn from an adult bookstore. And he was given the choice of public humiliation as well, or jail time, and he chose public humiliation. So he had to walk around holding a sign that said, 
see no evil. I'm thankful that Judge Chickenetti gave me an opportunity instead of a jail time. The next defendant that came in was there for walking into a Burger King right up to the counter and pepper spraying the employee that was there. They didn't say if there was a history between those two or if something happened with her order. Did she forget her fries and she went back to her car and pepper sprayed her? Or maybe it was the special sauce. Who knows? So what the judge presented her with was she could do 90 days in jail or she herself could get pepper sprayed in the face. And the woman was really upset. She was taken back, but she was like, well, I guess I'll get pepper sprayed in the face. You can't, he can't inflict pain like that on somebody because that's cruel and unusual punishment and it's against the eighth amendment. But he said he still gave her that option because of the anxiety that she faced, thinking that she was actually going to get pepper sprayed in the face. Like I think they actually set her up and they went to go do it and they didn't, of course, they can't. But could you imagine? But it's all that I could do is a lot permits. But it scared the hell out of the scared, defendant. Yeah, but it scared the hell out of the defendant. So it served its purpose. The next defendant hit hard for Judge Chick because he's an animal lover. Who's being silly? Oh, who's being silly? And this woman was in his courtroom for neglecting her pit bull. It was so disturbing when they showed images of the conditions that this dog was living in. It looked like a hoarder house and the dog was just in this filth. So Judge Chick gave her the choice of 90 days in jail or living like she made the dog live. You know, I, I can't interpret the feelings of a dog, but boy, if dogs could tell you how they felt. Amazing. Oh yeah, and scared and frightened and sick. Well, maybe you should get a little taste of that, but I'm gonna let you have a choice here. And the choice is I want you to live like moose. And what that consisted of was going down to the city dump. So the, I guess, bailiffs or whoever do this, the cops, whatever, they were told to go find the smelliest, dirtiest, most disgusting spot at the county dump. And she had to go there for eight hours and pick up trash. And he goes, I don't care if you throw up. If you throw up, you throw up. You need to live the way that you made that dog live. And I want them to find the stinkiest, smelliest, god-awful odor place they can find in that dump. And I want you to sit there for eight hours tomorrow. Just think what you did to that dog, why you smell the odor. If you puke, you puke. And so that's what she chose. And what's funny about that story is she showed up wearing a maxi dress and flip-flops, I guess because she knew she was gonna be on the news or whatever. And so they said to her, like, that's what you wore. And she goes, I know, I wasn't thinking when I got dressed and the only shoes that I could find, probably because she was a hoarder and everything was just dumped on top of each other. But the only thing she could find were these flip-flops and she kind of made a joke out of it. Girl, not the best outfit choice. I know, the shoes, I thought about it. <laughs> I couldn't find my other shoes and I was already running late, so. But they showed her later in the day at the smelly part of the dump picking up trash. They didn't make her use her hands. They gave her one of those sticks with the claws at the end. But still, she had to pick up trash and she learned her lesson. Definitely don't think I'd be here, but I'd rather be here than jail. Can't complain. They did wind up adopting that dog to a different family. Does that, is that how you say that? Somebody else adopted that dog, putting the dog up for adoption. I don't know how to say that. I don't know what's wrong with me right now. <laughs> but there's something about making the offenders feel the pain that their victims did. And these were petty crimes. And everybody that sees this judge is usually for a misdemeanor or a petty crime that would just do a few days a few months, I should say, in jail. And so when you feel the pain that you inflict on somebody, it, I guess it, it resonates a little bit more than just sitting in jail for a month or two. And his courtroom has 10% recidivism. So 10% of the people that he sentences repeat, but 90% of the people go on with their lives. They do not appear in front of him again. They're done, they learn their lesson. The national average is a 75% repeat offender, meaning only 25% of people don't go back to a life of crime. And when they asked this judge why he does this and, and why it's so effective, he said, I can just look at the law books. I can see they deserve 90 days. Like this crime gets 90 days, go down the graph, whatever it is. I genuinely don't know if that's how it works, but in my brain, that's how it works. So he said, if he takes on each case individually, instead of doing that and expresses compassion in how he's going to sentence them, gets creative versus 
just sending them right to jail, then he has the ability to change the system. A judge can simply follow the law and if somebody committed a crime, here are the possible penalties. How much of those, how much of that do I impose? Sure, you can do that and you go home and, and, and you can rest easy. Or you can take each case a little more personal and still apply that same law. He said, just sending away people to jail for pettiness is the gateway to making them a better criminal. He acknowledged that sending them to prison is like sending them to crime school. He didn't use those words, but those are words that we've all said in the past. And he said, when you just automatically send somebody to jail for pettiness, they're gonna wind up learning how to be a better criminal. And they're gonna appear back in front of him, or the next step is they're gonna appear for a felony. He said, most people don't start out by doing felonies. They start out by doing petty stuff. In federal prisons, their problems started way back here with my court with municipal courts, with the minor offenses. Most people don't start out with a felony case. We have to stop them from going further at the beginning stages. Uh, that, otherwise it escalates. They get in jail, they get smarter, smarter criminally. And as they get smarter criminally, defenses become greater. And this is his way to stop that right there, to stop that cycle and to set people on the right path, to let them learn compassion, to let them feel the pain of what they made other people feel. And that opens up their hearts and it sets them on the right path. So most people, unless they have a mental illness, usually that's enough to trigger somebody to not want to hurt people again or animals or do crimes. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know if you're enjoying the stories of compassion in the criminal justice system. Of course, we're begging districts and courts and even President Trump to use their ability to express compassion in the criminal justice system with things like compassionate release in the districts and the states, of course, with things like clemency, which is President Trump's ability to express mercy to people who deserve a second chance in life. And also throughout the whole epidemic that we've experienced, it just blows me away that state officials are starting to open up doors of jails and prisons and letting out low level nonviolent offenders so that it decreases the spread of that germ and ultimately it helps save lives. So I'm so grateful for that. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Keep staying strong, keep loving strong. Keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys.